single to Aiden's field, please. Perhaps the paper chains will look better over the windows. No. No, they'll be fine once I manage to pin this in. Well, go carefully with that paint. <clears throat> oh, sorry, Sarge. I told you before, this is a duty room, not some sort of defensive redoubt. Now get this stuff out of here. Well, it is Christmas, Sarge. Yes, I know it is, Ventress, and I'd like to get through the festivities without losing an eye. Well, can't we at least keep the paper chain, Sarge? Oh, very well. But get rid of this herbaceous border. So get the mistletoes out, then. Patricia Somerby lives. Oh, yeah. Well, my doctor Somerby, she's uh, my doctor. So she'll be at surgery now. Could you take me there then, please? All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trisha? Trisha? Heather! Oh, my God! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't believe it. What are you. Jenny, this is an old friend of mine, Heather Conway. I knew that the moment I saw you. What are you doing up here? I'm, I was worried about you. I thought you were in the West Indies or somewhere. That's what people were supposed to think. Look, I'm just glad you're all right. Look, give me two minutes to finish up. You go through there. I'll be right with you, OK? OK. You weren't planning on festooning the place with them Chinese lanterns, I hope. Hardly appropriate for a funeral parlour, even if it is Christmas. Bernard! What I am planning is making a small killing out of these as I got them at bargain basement price. I don't suppose you fancy taking a couple off me hands, do you, while stocks last? You don't suppose quite right. I'd be surprised if anybody were around here. You know, that's the difference between us, Bernard. For you, the glass is half empty. For me, the glass is always half full. As long as somebody else has paid for it. Bernard! Why don't you try and get a bit of cheerful optimism into your work? You double your trade, you know. Well, there's something else there isn't much demand for. Cheerful undertakers. So, is it all true? What, that I had an affair with him? Yeah. Yeah, that was true. But that I was some sort of cool girl, no. None of that's true, whatever the papers say. Do you mind talking about it? No, not at all. Well, we met at a club in the West End, one of those very expensive ones where you practically have to take out a mortgage to buy a bottle of champagne. The great trick being to get somebody else prepared to buy it for you. Uh, and he was that someone? Yes. Yes, he was always generous, also rich, charming and incredibly good-looking for a man of his age. Not to mention being tipped as the possible future leader of the party. I was dazzled. Albert, so what went wrong? Nothing at first. I was in love with him and I thought he was in love with me. He told me that his marriage was dead in the water, but it never seemed to be politically expedient to end it. And then one day he rang me out of the blue to tell me that a couple of the Sundays had got onto our affair, so it would be better if we ended it. For the sake of his political future, presumably? Mm-hmm. That's about it, yes. Well, the rest of it, I'm sure you've read all about it, the fact and the fiction. So what brought you up here? Well, I had to get out of London until things died down. And then I thought of you in your remote little corner of Yorkshire. It sounded perfect. <laughs> so here I am. You can put me up over Christmas, can't you? Well, yes and no. Yes, of course I can, but if you stay here, you'll have to sleep on the settee. The spare room's only half decorated and there's no bed in it yet. Oh, I see. On the other hand, the pub in the village lets out rooms. It's cheap and cheerful, but the landlord's a friend. You might prefer to stay there. That sounds fine. You're bound to be recognised the minute you walk in there. Aidensfield's a long way from London, and even journalists aren't that keen on working over Christmas. 
If I can just lie low here until the holiday ends, then that's all the time I need. For what? To make other arrangements. Right. Peggy! Peggy? She didn't realise you're probably Don't missing look now. the bug. I think it's somebody's about to try and sell you something. Well, we're wasting his time, Gina. Take my word for it. Oscar! Just think what a couple of strings of these would do to cheer this place up. We got enough decorations already, thanks. So you're not doing anything special then? For the old folks' dinner you're laying on? How do you mean? Oscar, these lights. They twinkle. Twinkle, do they? How much? To you, Oscar, 15 bob. And believe me, I'm probably robbing myself at that price. <laughs> That'll be the day. Right, if I do take a box, will you shove off and leave me in peace? Your wish is my command. That told him. It's almost been here, all right. They've obviously made their way through the edge over there. A bloke by the look of these prints. Ah, I'll go and check on Miss Turner. No, but I definitely heard someone out in the back garden, and Peggy, well, she certainly reacted as though there was someone there. Look, Miss Turner, are you sure she hasn't just gone off? No. She's a fully trained guide, Doc. She wouldn't do that. Well, I'm sure she hasn't gone far. Don't worry, Miss Turner, we'll find her for you. Just be on the safe side, best keep your doors locked. I think I've been conned. You've got a visitor. Who? Councillor Joyce Jowett. Oh, no. What have I done to deserve this? Ah, <laughs> oh, Councillor Jowett. What a pleasant surprise. I'm here about the old people's Christmas lunch. Oh, you got uh, your invitation, then? Personally, I would have preferred to use the village hall. Well, there's just the one problem with the village hall, isn't there? It's a bit like... Having a party in an air raid shelter. By the you know I'm the new chairman of the Finance Committee, which will be funding this event. Oh, yes. It was on the BBC News, wasn't it? And we still haven't seen a menu. Oh, well, I'll get one sent round to you. It's a very original menu this year, you know. Uh, turkey, roast potatoes, Brussels sprouts and stuffing. <laughs> Merry Christmas. What's Baudicere up to now, Oscar? Ah, oh, she's just throwing her weight around now. She's the new chairman of the local finance committee. Finance? Really? Oscar, this is an old friend of mine, Heather Conway. Ah, whose face I feel sure I've seen somewhere before. Heather's spending Christmas with me and needs a room over the holiday. Ah, well, you've come to the right place. Also a bit of privacy, if that's possible. Oh, I see, yes. Your secret is safe with me, Miss Conway, for as long as it lasts. I managed to trace her as far as Ashford, Lee. Yorkshire. Summerby. Well, where does she fit in? Well... If she's a doctor, she's not going to be that hard to find. Morning, Mr. Hanson. Morning. Is there anywhere around here I can hire a car? It certainly is. Where? Thank you. You wouldn't have to know if there's a Dr. Summerby practicing around here? Not in Ashfordley, no. Right. There is a doctor of that name down in Aidensfield. And how far is that from here? Just a few miles. Thank you. You've been uh, very helpful. We try. So, there's no sign of this dog, then? Afraid not. Could have been children, I suppose? Uh, it could have been, and if it had been, I would have thought the dog would have returned by now. And there were footprints from a prowler. All right, spread the word. Tell everyone to keep their eyes open. Oh, 
Brown eyes that seem to say, stay a while, I want to play. Would you, could you do, please stop? He's a lonely pup in a Christmas shop. Can I ask you a question, Councillor? What is it that's missing from all our lives over in Aidensfield this Christmas? What are you suggesting? A focal point for our community spirit. Or to put it more succinctly, a Christmas tree. It seems most of the villages around have one. Bit late for that now, I would have thought. Ah, now that's where I beg to differ. I happen to be in a position to be able to supply one. A 25-foot tree with lights, of course. Not those awful Chinese things you've been flooding the village with. Good Lord, no, Mrs Jowett. <laughs> the ones I'm talking about are the real McCoy. Direct from my supplier in Blackpool who also supplies much of the gear for the illuminations. Really? And obviously there will have to be a ceremonial switch on, with all the local press in full attendance. And the most obvious person to perform the ceremony would be your good self, Councillor. After all, Councillor Blaketon will be getting all the credit for the old folks' Christmas party, even though it was your committee who financed it. All right, Mr. Scripps. I'm listening. Dr. Summerby surgery? Is Heather there, please? Heather? I'm sorry, there's no one of that name here. Who's speaking, please? There is evidence that there was some sort of prowler up at her cottage, but whether the two events are connected, it's difficult to say. It's just so awful that it should happen at Christmas. I mean, she's no family to speak of, as far as I know. At least she would have had Peggy for company. Whatever can be done is being done. You know that, Tricia. I know. Of course, what would help would be a photograph of Peggy. It's funny you should say that. There's a man called Hanson would like a word. What about? Well, he won't say, but I'm sure it's that man who rang asking for Heather. I recognise a voice. OK, show him in. Come through, will you? Please sit down, Mr Hanson. Thanks. How can I help? I'm trying to get in touch with a mutual friend of ours. A mutual friend of ours? Heather Conway? I understand she's staying with you at the moment. Oh. I can't imagine how you got that impression, Mr Hanson. More to the point, I have no friend of that name. Oh, I see. I've obviously got the wrong Dr Summerby, then. Nothing urgent, I hope, that you have to get in touch with her about, I mean. Oh, I just heard she was in the area, that's all, then. I thought I'd say hello. Like I said, we're old friends. find Christmas up here pretty quiet after swinging in London, Heather. Well, believe me, Gina, after what I've been through recently, a bit of quiet sounds most attractive. Hi. Hi, Phil. And you're going to introduce us then, Gina? Phil, this is Heather. Heather, Phil. Hello, Phil. Hi. <laughs> and watch what you say, he's a copper. Oh, really? You were uh, just passing through, are you? As a matter of fact, she's staying with us over Christmas. Oh, really? Do you know, I have a feeling I know you from somewhere. No. I can't for the life of me think from where. Heather, can I have a word upstairs? 
Yes, excuse me. I, I definitely know that girl's face from somewhere. Oh, put your tongue in, Phil, before someone trips over it. You look like Rin Tin Tin. Yes, sir, what can I get you? Half a bitter, please. Half a bitter, coming up. Tell me, you wouldn't happen to have a girl called Heather staying here, would you? Heather? I don't think we've got any Heathers staying here, have we, Oscar? Not that I know of. Yeah, I'm gonna make it. Oh, I'm so sorry, Phil. How clumsy of me. Come round here, I'll, I'll get you the towel. Oh, it's so difficult these days, getting decent stuff. <laughs> so, what would be your interest in this, um, Heather person? Well, between you and me, I'm a journalist, actually. Really? And if anybody was able to tell us where we could find this Heather, let's just say we'd make it worth his while. In fact, very worth his while. And does uh, this Heather have a second name? Conway. Heather Conway? No, not the Heather Conway. The one whose picture is in all the papers. Yeah, that's the one. Well, I'll certainly keep my eyes peeled. Having said that, I'm sure I would have known if uh, she had walked in here. <laughs> Hanson. That's what he said. Does it ring any bells? No. But then that doesn't mean anything. Look, uh, just to warn you, there's a bloke downstairs from the press. Name of Hanson. He's asking if there's a Heather Conway stopping here. I can't stay here. Looks like my sofa will have to do. Have the other half. Cheers. On the house. Bingo. Only. You should see her off. She makes Elizabeth Taylor look like Jack Palance. Well, what's she doing in Aidensfield? Hiding from the press. So uh, keep it to yourself, because if Gina finds out I've told anyone, she'll have me guts for garters. Well, what's Gina got to do with it? Well, she's in on it. Her and Oscar. And um, whatever you do, don't tell Tom Thumb out there. Because if he finds out about her, he'll probably go around and... <laughs> I'm sure this is just about avoiding the press. What else? Well, if Hansen is a reporter, he's certainly tenacious. Believe me, Trisha, you've no idea. You you can't even take a bath without someone trying to stick a camera through your window. It's like... It's just like some sort of nightmare. I'm sure. Hi. Hi. Come in. Well, this is great, Trisha. I've got one of the lads over at the local evening paper to do a piece on it. Oh, thanks, Mike. That's OK, and this is just what he needs. But if it's to make this evening's edition, I'd better get over there straight away. Look, Trish, don't worry. We'll find her. I promise. You can take them back, because they're rubbish. There you go. Good of you to join me. You just missed the lynch mob. Been practically under siege here with people returning these duff lanterns. If you've got a problem, replace them. It's the replacements they want replacing. Well, don't worry about it, Bernard. I've got bigger fish to fry. Why is it my heart sinks when you say things like that? I've got to find a 25-foot Christmas tree. And David, in a flash of inspiration, reminded me that Lord Ashfordley has a wood full of them. Not to mention a trigger-happy gamekeeper called Reed and sundry man-eating dogs. Come along, David. I hope you're not thinking of pinching one. Bernard, I shall treat that remark with the contempt it deserves. Two more calls while you are out requesting home visits, along with the four you've already got to make. Here's a list. Heather. Oh, no, 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 you go. I'll be fine. I can help Jenny put up the decorations. OK, thanks. See you later. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Christmas time, a Christmas tree with a happy family. Pity him, he's got no pup. He's a lonely pup in a Christmas shop. 
Uh, what's that dog doing in here, Mr Sands? Um, it's my girlfriend's Mrs Paxton. Well, she's gone into hospital and, and, and asked me to look after it for her. It's only over Christmas. No, I'm sorry, Mr Sands. I think I did make it quite clear when I let you have the room. Absolutely no pets of any kind. Of course she did, Mrs Paxton, but if you could just stretch a point for once, please. She's a good dog, fully house trained and everything, aren't you, Peg? Good girl. Oh, very well. It can stay till after Christmas is over, but after that you'll have to make other arrangements. Of course I will. Thanks a lot, Mrs Paxton. Hello? Hi, Tom. I'll just get your prescription. <laughs> Hello. Tom Nicholson. And you are? Heather. It's oh, a nice name. Sort of fragrant. Uh, Heather's staying with us over Christmas. I'm sorry, Tom. She's still not signed it yet. Well, don't worry. I'll call back. In fact, it'll be a pleasure. See you later. They've given us a pretty good show, Sarge. Well, let's hope it doesn't backfire on us, Bradley. Um, backfire, Sarge? Well, this sort of publicity is all very well. I mean, let's hope it does jog somebody's memory, but what if it doesn't? If the dog isn't found, everyone will know who to blame, won't they? So, you'd better find it quickly, hadn't you? David! Oh, yes, very nice. Very nice indeed. Just what the doctor ordered, David. Right, whenever you're ready. Oi! <laughs> ah, Mr Reed. <laughs> now, we wouldn't be here, of course, without seeking official permission from my good friend, Lord Ashwardley. And um, we did call by the office, uh, but unfortunately, Lord Ashfordley's away for Christmas. <laughs> uh, which puts us in a bit of a cleft stick. I mean, here's the village, in need of a Christmas tree, and here's Lord Ashfordley, uh, not here. So, in uh, Lord Ashfordley's absence, uh, I can't really see any alternative course of action. Unless, of course, you, as Lord Ashfordley's representative, feel that we could come to some mutually satisfactory financial agreement? Aids for police. Yes, Phil. Right, Mrs. Paxton, and the address. Great, thanks. A goddess, Alf. A goddess. But classy with it as well. And does she have a name, this uh, vision of loveliness? Heather. Oh, really? Apparently, she's staying at Trisha's over Christmas. Yeah, don't tell Phil. You don't want to go around and start making a fool of himself. Gotcha. Hey, uh, you've not said anything to him about, uh, you know what? Not a word, Phil. <laughs> not a word. I hope you did pay for that. Bernard, you are looking at a man that has just lost an arm and a leg. David, that's the address over at Ashfordley. I want you to nip over and pick up them coloured lights. Right, Mr Bernard. I thought you told Council and Mrs Jarrett they'd come from Blackpool. Which they probably did, Bernard. Once upon a time. Jingle bell, jingle bell. 
jingle bell rock, jingle around the clock. Mix and mingle in a jingle and beat. That's the jingle bell rock. What makes you think it's the dog we're looking for? Well, the one that's gone missing is called Peggy. Right. Uh, well, he calls this one Peg. Right, Mrs. Paxton, I'll have a little look round if that's all right. Um, let me know if he comes back. And I'll hold on to this if that's all right. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing, dancing, jingle bell square. In the frosty air. Go gliding in a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Jingle around the clock. Mix and mingle in the jingle and beat. That's the jingle bell. That's the jingle bell. That's the jingle bell. Rock. Here we are. Oh, cheers. You wouldn't happen to have a room going over the next couple of nights, would you? No, I'm afraid we don't take paying guests over the Christmas period. Sorry about that. Oh, David, you got them then? Oh, yeah, I've got them all right. Great. I don't suppose you would know anywhere uh, I could uh, stay over Christmas, do you? Stay here. But they don't take paying guests over Christmas? Since when? You want to see the one they've got booked in now? She's a cracker. Oh, really? This uh, wouldn't be her by any chance, would it? Yeah, that's the one. When you ready, Oscar? Two scotches and uh, half a shandy, please. Victor Sands came out of prison six weeks ago. What was he in for? Petty theft offences, bit of shoplifting. Nothing violent. Anything but. Uh, according to the governor, he was quite a shy character. Got kicked out of home by his stepfather, left to fend for himself. He was one of those people who didn't seem able to make friends. In fact, his only real friend inside was a dog. A dog? Yes, Sarge. He was one of a group of prisoners involved in an experimental rehabilitation scheme, uh, working with and training potential guide dogs. He got quite distressed when the scheme came to an end and the dog was taken away from him. I think I see. This boy gets out of prison and has no one to spend Christmas with except his old friend, Peggy the dog. Quite, Sarge. Sergeant Craddock. Sergeant Craddock, yes. Oh, hello, Mr. Reed. Well, B.C. Bradley's here with me now. I'll hand you over to him. It's Lord Ashfordley's gamekeeper. You, Anson. Who are you? Harry Parker. And I'll ask the questions from now on. Where is she? Can you describe the man you saw? In his twenties, slim, black hair. I've seen him three or four times now. I'm just sorry I haven't managed to grab him for you. Pretty slippy character, obviously. Well, he certainly doesn't want to be caught. How did you know he was there? I didn't. At least dog barked. He must have heard us before he did. Right. 
Thanks very much for your time, Mr. Reed. It's been most helpful. If we can't catch him, we might be able to catch his dog. David! David! Just off to the town hall to see Councillor Jowett. Right, Mr. Vernon. What exactly do you have in mind, then? That's nothing to do with you. No, look. No, you, look. You've done your bit by finding her, and I'm here to finish the job off, all right? Sort that lady out. Peggy! Come on, girl! Peggy! Peggy! Oh, it's no use. She's not here. Listen to me, Vic. This is pointless. There's no way you'll be allowed to keep her. She's Miss Turner's guide dog. She needs her. Come on. Return her now, and there's no harm done. No, um, we could say that you'd just borrowed her for Christmas. Couldn't we, Constable? What do you say, Vic? She is. Wait for me. Can I help you? Yeah. You can ask Heather to step back for a wee for a minute. Unless, of course, you. Heather! That's right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm afraid there's no one of that name here. Of course there isn't. But if you should just happen to bump into anyone answering to it, just tell them this from me, will you? She knows what we want. She knows we're going to get it, one way or the other. So if she's got even half a brain inside that pretty little head of hers, I suggest she uses it. After all, we wouldn't want anybody getting hurt now, would we? And that's a threat, is it? Think of it as very sound advice. And if I should bump into this person, who shall I say gave her this advice? Call me Harry. All my friends do. And tell her she's got one hour to get in touch. I'll be down at the pub in the village. She tried to run, follow her. All right, Heather, what is going on here? And this time the truth, please. The whole truth. <laughs> hey, 
Gainesville Police. Oh, hi, Tricia. No, he's not at the moment, but uh, I'm expecting him back any minute. What's the matter? You don't panic. I stay where you are. As soon as he gets here, we'll be around there, okay? Some sort of problem is, officer? I believe the official phrase is helping police with their inquiries, sir. Now tell him what you just told me. Well, it started with a photograph I found on his desk one day of my famous boyfriend on a beach in Spain with certain equally well-known faces from the East End. Gangsters? Yes. Go on. So when I asked him about them, he simply laughed it off and said that they were old friends from way back and he just happened to bump into them. I see. So I thought no more about it until one day he turned up at my flat with a package that he said he wanted to leave with me. His story being that he'd already been burgled twice and so he thought it would be safer with me. And did he say what was in this package? No, but I looked um, and found that it was full of records, financial records. Of what? Of certain business transactions that he'd been involved in with the people in the photograph, which naturally suggested that they were more than just friends. So what did you do? As requested, until he suddenly finished with me, um, and I still had the documents with me, and then he called, demanding them back. And I just uh, couldn't even bear hearing his voice on the phone, and I told him I didn't know what he was talking about. I, I know it was stupid. And that's when I started to get funny phone calls, not to mention sinister men hanging around my flat at all times of the day and night. One of which is our friend Harry from earlier. Why didn't you go to the police in London? And tell them what? That my ex-boyfriend, the politician, had set his gangster friends onto me. I couldn't prove he had, and... Anyway, they hadn't actually done anything illegal. So that's why I cut and ran. But I've still got the documents with me. And what about this other character, Hanson, the bloke sitting outside at the moment? Where does he fit in? I have no idea. Well, we'd better go and ask him, hadn't we? So, what's all this about, Mr Hanson? I'm a humble private detective. All I know is I was paid to trace her. By whom? No, I don't know. You don't know who paid you? I was approached by somebody on behalf of somebody else, all right? And that somebody else wouldn't just so happen to be a certain politician, would it? As I've already said, I don't know. What's all this? I should go, Tricia. Go? Where? Back to London. You've been a good friend and all I brought you is trouble. Well, Heather, that's what friends are for, to be there for you when you're in trouble. These people are dangerous. Somebody could get seriously hurt and I'd never forgive myself. But you're safer here than you would be back in London alone. But it isn't fair on you. In fact, it was very selfish of me even turning up here in the first place. Like I said, that's what friendship's about, isn't it? Tell us about this accomplice of yours, Mr Hanson. If by accomplice you mean the bloke I was with, all I know is I was told to meet him at Ashville Station this morning, which I did. Until then, I'd never clapped eyes on him before. But you do know his name, presumably. Parker. Harry Parker. Did you also know he threatened Miss Conway at the surgery today? I know you went to see her, but I didn't know that, no. Well, according to Miss Conway, Harry Parker's mixed up with a bunch of gangsters. Did you know that, Mr Hanson? No, I swear. But it doesn't surprise you. No. Not really. Why is that? Because of something he said in the car coming over here. About finishing the job and sorting her out once and for all. But as I've already said, all I did was find her. Well, let's hope a court sees it that way. Right now, Miss Conway's safety is top priority, wouldn't you agree? Uh, 
down again. That'll be another double, will it, sir? Like I said. Huge favour. Oh, well, of course, if I can. There's a man waiting for me at the Aidensfield Arms. His name is Harry. Can you give him this and tell him Heather sent it? Well, well. Right, aye. Thanks, David. Bye, then. Bye. Excuse me. You're a uh, Harry, aren't you? More of it. Oh, it's nothing. It's just a. Uh, I was told to give you this. Where'd you get this? Oh, it were uh, that pretty lady, Heather. I think her name is. I've, I've just dropped her off at the station. Made me taxi like. What's all that about, eh? Heather! Mike, it's Trisha. She's gone. I don't know, the station, I think. She's taken her bags. came for, so please leave me alone. I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. You see... When a naughty girl inconvenienced a lot of very important people, and the way they see it, you know too much. <laughs> It'll be your train, will it, doll? You wanted a word, Sarge? A word? I didn't want a word. Not another whiskey, though. So what's going to happen to him? Well, he was too hot for us to handle, so we handed him back to CID. Well, you've certainly had a busy day, Constable. Definitely. Yes, so have you, Doctor. I'm glad you found Emma's dog for it. Thanks, yes, anyway. Merry Christmas, anyway. 
Merry Christmas. Mr. Vernon! 